It's your ordinary football show. It's the Old Dominion Football Show with Bruce Raider and Coach Bobby Wilder. It was tough and physical, the type of game that takes its toll on a young college football team. But the Monarchs held tough last Saturday and gave their fans a 31-21 come-from-behind victory on a beautiful fall day in Norfolk. The win puts ODU exactly where it wants to be. One win away from its first ever bowl game opportunity with two games to play. The first challenge comes tomorrow on the road against Red Hot Southern Miss. How big of a challenge will this game be? Let's find out. The Old Dominion Football Show starts now. Hi, Bruce Rader, along with Coach Bobby Wilder. And Coach, with two games left, you need one win yep. to reach your goal and become eligible for a bowl game for the first time in history. Isn't this exactly mm -hmm. where you want to be? It is, Bruce. And anytime you're playing meaningful games in November, and, and every time we've been eligible for postseason, we've been in these meaningful games. And that's what makes it really exciting, not only for the players, coaches, but for the fans, everybody at our school and, and the other interesting point Bruce I wanted to make is I was talking with President Broderick about this last week if if we're still in the FCS at five and five the season's over because at the FCS it, as you know it's just the playoffs for 24 teams whereas if you're five and five at the FBS level you've got an opportunity to go someplace really nice and really warm around Christmas whether it's the Bahamas Hawaii Arizona Florida all these spots our league's done a phenomenal job with seven bowl tie-ins and we're in a position that we can control our own destiny with that. Of course, if you were an FBS team, you'd probably be in the top <laughs> ten. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Let's take a quick look back at last week's win against uh, Texas El Paso, a very mm -hmm. physical game. It was a playoff right. game for mm -hmm. both teams, and sure your was. Monarchs answered the call. Yeah, great point by you. It, it did feel like a playoff game, Bruce, with both teams at four and five needing to get to six wins. That's how Sean Kugler, their outstanding coach, was approaching it. That's how I was approaching it with our players and staff. And it didn't start out well for us, Bruce. And, and believe it or not, for the 10th time in 10 games this year, we trailed early. We've trailed in every game this year. And uh, very hard to simulate their style of offense. Sean's a former NFL offensive lineman. They came out in two tight ends. They brought an extra lineman in. Uh, and they went down the field, scored 10 plays, 71 yards. But after that first quarter, Bruce, where they rushed for 57 yards, our defense held them to 55 yards rushing the remaining three quarters. So we needed to get used to the speed, what they were doing. Coach Nagy and the defensive staff started coordinating some really good run blitzes, and our defense really picked up the pace. Remember when you had tight ends? <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day. <laughs> Back in the day. Quarterback David Washington seems to be getting better every single week. As David mm -hmm. goes, so goes your offense. Yeah, and our team is gaining tremendous confidence from his performance now, Bruce. And the games he's played, we're three and one, and he's doing an outstanding job protecting the ball. He only has one turnover in our, our last two games that have both been wins. He's 26 for 42 in this game, 292 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions, protected the ball really well, and he really took what the defense was giving him, and even more important, Bruce, in some critical situations where there was nothing there. He threw the ball away so he could punt and play defense. Tomorrow, your final road game of the year down mm -hmm. in Hattiesburg, taking on a red-hot uh, Southern Miss team. Sure. Again, you are the underdogs, but for a legitimate reason. All hail the underdogs, Bruce. We've yeah. been in this role a few times this year. Southern Miss is really on a roll, Bruce. They're one of the hottest teams in the country in their last four games. All wins. They've outscored their opponents 44 to 11 by average. They lead the league in offense. They lead the league in defense, and they're coming off a win at Rice, 65 to 10. Who, as you know, Rice was was fighting for the Western Division Championship last year. And what's really interesting about this team, Bruce Todd Monk, and their head coach is a good friend of mine. When he took over a few years back, as you remember, Larry Fedora left, took the North Carolina job. They were coming off a 12 and two. Then they go 0 and 12 under their new coach. He gets fired. They bring uh, Todd Munkin in, and he's lost two years of recruits. So. Two years ago, they go 1-11, Bruce. Last year, 3-9, and nine, and it looks to me now they're checking off every box of who's beaten them and how much they've beaten them by. This team's now a veteran team. Now, I mentioned earlier how mm -hmm. physical last week's game was. Ooh, Give sure us was. an injury report mm -hmm. and also including the condition of your star running back, Ray Lowry. Largest injury report we've had in seven years of playing football. 33 players are on this report, Bruce. Wow. 16 of them are out for the year, and Ray Lowry um, has a mid-sprain 
uh, in his left foot, which could Bruce turn into a fracture, which is why we've, we're putting him in a, a walking boot for the next end of eight to ten days to try to see if we can get that healed up and possibly get him back for Florida Atlantic. He tried to play in this game, Bruce. It wasn't feeling good, but he goes five carries, 59 yards. He averages 12 yards a carry and a 42-yard touchdown run. So hopefully, Bruce, by sitting him this week, he'll be back for next week. Although I did think that freshman uh, Jeremy Cox did a great job uh, uh, subbing mm. for Ray there at wow. running back. He sure did. True freshman. And, and like I've said with all our true freshmen, they've played 10 games now, so they're growing up. Bruce, he had 84 yards rushing in this game, in this game the game-clinching 42-yard touchdown run in the fourth quarter. And, and none bigger, Bruce, than the play he made right before the half in the two-minute drive on third and 10 from their 49, 23-yard catch. Gets out of bounds when we didn't have any timeouts left. He really stepped up. Good football sense. Mm -hmm. Still to come, he came to ODU all the way from Alabama, and defensive back Devon Brown faces a tough test as he enters the one-minute drill with Brian Parsons. That's coming up next on the Old Dominion Football Show. Welcome back to the Old Dominion Football Show. This week in the one-minute drill, we have cornerback Devon Brown. Devon, you're from Alabama. It's humid in Alabama. It's humid in Virginia, too. Where, where is it? Where is it, which humidity is worse? Alabama, of course. Food that you hated as a kid, but love now. I would say string beans. I not like string beans growing up at all, but now I've got to eat your greens. If you could have dinner with one athlete, dead or alive, who would it be? Carmelo Anthony. What, what, what do you do? Are you a Knicks fan? Yeah, yeah, I love the Knicks and I like Lala. Most embarrassing song on your phone that you don't want some of these guys to know about, but they may find out now. Uh, I got a Sierra song on there. I think Body Party. I might be it, but don't tell nobody. <laughs> Biggest sports memory growing up? Uh, probably my senior year. I got a pick six on the last game. That was like the big play. I haven't scored since then, so that was a big moment. Did you celebrate? Yes, I did. I had to do the can new. You open it up. Let's see, let's see, let's see it. <laughs> All right, quarterback Devon Brown, he's passed the one-minute drill. Devon, say goodbye to the Monarch Nation. All right, see you all later, Monarch. Welcome back, Coach. I'm going to put you on the spot. Here we go. <laughs> you never shy away from a tough question. So I ask, mm -hmm. with such a young team, uncertainty at the quarterback situation, mm -hmm. you lose both tight ends before the season even begins. Did mm -hmm. you ever expect this team mm -hmm. to be one win away from mm -hmm. a bowl game with two games left? Boy, those are the type of questions, Bruce, that, that keep you up late at night early in the season because as a head coach, you ask yourself all those rhetorical questions. And um, I felt like we were talented. And I felt like if those 33 first and second year players we had could grow up and, and we could somehow survive that stretch, Bruce, of NC State, App State, and Marshall. If we could survive that stretch, um, that, that we would have an opportunity to be here. But when we lost those three games as badly as we did, I was concerned. And then the injuries piled up and then Shuler was struggling at quarterback. And what really turned this around for us was David Washington going to quarterback and the way he turned out. Old Dominion against Southern Miss on the road tomorrow. Join us next week for the Old Dominion Football Show. Good luck, Coach. Thank you, Bruce.